we have the quality and the quantity. Each point in your funnel is a potential revenue leak. So what can you do with the information from this form? Emails, SMS, video, gifts, whatever it is that's going to remove that friction and further the relationship. When it comes to lead generation, there are two levers you can pull. We have the quality and the quantity. And now I'm not saying it's one or the other, but the answer is not always more leads equals good. Why not? Well, because what you really want is more buyers. So today we're focusing on the quality levers, right? Not the quantity getting a flood, but really dialing in to make sure that you're using your sales person, your sales team, energy and time in the most efficient way possible. So the number one way to get really high quality leads is by getting your messaging right and your golden hippo offer. But I talk about that a lot in my other videos. So today here are three hacks that you can use to turn your traffic into hungry and ready to buy high quality leads. So number one is the personalized hack. Most businesses either don't ask enough information or they ask for too much on their forms. Now, it isn't necessarily true that the more you ask, the lower the conversion rate will be, right? Actually, there's been a lot of studies that the sweet point is often around the five to seven different form fields. So hack number one is to get that actual lead form firing where it persuades somebody to feel like they're gonna be getting a personalized experience, but it also provides the information that a sales rep needs to be educated and prepared for the sales call. Remembering that each point in your funnel, each touch point is a potential rep revenue leak, right? So we want to fix this touch point and this is it, the lead forms. When you set up your lead form, you can do this in several different ways. What I would avoid is having these really long, overwhelming forms that ask too much information. You want to get really clear on what is a high quality lead, so lead scoring between your marketing and your sales team. And then you want to start with having the bare basics and then you can start adding more as you get that feedback loop from the sales team to the marketing team. As an example, if they kept saying, hmm, nobody has enough money, they're all tire kickers, we need people to have at least $40,000 in the bank. Okay, well then you can add that as a form field. What is your money in the bank? Zero to 10,000, 10,000 to 30,000, 40,000 plus, right? And then you know that's gonna be a high quality lead. So when you're doing your form, you'll wanna test it, but what you can do is send them straight to a calendar link, like the one I'm showing you on screen. This is how you book in with us here at Persuasion Experience. And we just have a few forms on a calendar booking and a bit of text that comes before that, that tells them why this information is important. We were actually testing this versus a multi-step form like you answer one question, then the other, then the other, then the other, then the other. And the calendar actually outperformed because it was one click. They chose a time, so they did a micro commitment and then they put in their information. And so that's why we like this calendar booking because they've already done the micro commitment. If they've chosen their time, that's the first step. And then they put in the information. What you can also do as well is if you have a lot of um, information you want to get from people is on the thank you page, have this information, right? So you can request this information on the thank you page because I've got another video about the thank you page, but effectively you have just got them to take an action. Why not get them to take another action? But it's all around the pre-framing and the positioning of getting this information. All right. So what can you do with the information from this form? One, you can cancel bad fits. If it's not a good fit, cancel them, give them other valuable information, but it's just going to waste both of your time to go through with the call. Number two is that you can segment and personalize the reminders as well as the follow-up if they don't go ahead with you. The other way that we do it is that we use that information and then we connect with them on LinkedIn and say, hey, can't wait to have your free strategy session on the date. As a reminder, we're going to be figuring out, they always put in like, what's their big goal or burning problem. Here's a case study to check out before you come on the call. So you can do that on LinkedIn as well. And overall, you can just have a way better sales call. Okay, hack number two is what I would call the forgotten hack. One of the most underutilized pages 
in your funnel is the thank you page. Someone has just taken an action with your business and they usually have a lot of excitement and or regret, right? This is where that post-purchase dissonance can start to come in or that anxiety like, oh, am I gonna be getting on a stinky sales call that's gonna try and pressure me into doing something? So the thank you page is where you can eliminate that anxiety, build trust and extend the relationship. So check out this formula on screen. We've got congratulate and future pace them, tell them what's happening next, get them to take another action and then persuade and eliminate any objections or friction with some social proof, right? Instead of just saying, thank you, we'll call you soon or thank you, look forward to speaking with you. Like we're missing an opportunity to really persuade and excite the lead to turn them into a higher quality lead for your salesperson. And a big warning, never say thank you on your thank you pages. I know it sounds a little bit counterintuitive. However, when you say thank you to them, it shifts the frame and makes it feel like they've done something for you. So they've just done you a favor, right? So already the, sh the, the frame is off. What you wanna do instead is congratulate and future pace them and reinforce that they've just made a really good decision for themselves. Okay, and finally, hack number three, this is the no show remover hack. Okay, so they've booked in, we've taken them through the form. They've seen the thank you page, they've taken another action. And now there's this dead time between this, this form filling in and this thank you page and when they actually get on the call. And what we wanna do now is avoid cancellations and no shows, but still pre-frame them and excite them, right? To still boosting the quality of your lead. We can use this time to build excitement, indoctrinate them and build the relationship. AKA, we want to set the frame, which is very important in sales and position you properly in their minds to make the sales call a lot easier. Here are some of the touch points you can use from post, they've booked in the call, the call could be in one day, two days, three days, two weeks, who knows, right? That's a big time to not continue that conversation. You can use the friction remover of email reminders to avoid cancellations. Now, a lot of this can happen default in a calendar. You can make them better, of course, but it's amazing the amount of people who don't just put in basic email reminders to help eliminate the no-shows. You can also do this in text message as well. Now there's the pre suite tool where you can send a short video, tell them they need to watch this video before coming on the call. It's really important. It's all about how you position it. And in that you can show testimonials, results, but ultimately how you're gonna get them into their dream outcome. And if you have segmented earlier on in the funnel on that form, that is going to help you because you could send a more personalized video based on the dream outcome or the problems that they're trying to solve. Okay, the third one is commitment. So what you wanna do, this is like what hairdressers and doctors do where they're like, they'll send you a message to get you to confirm you're coming, right? So if you can get someone like commitment and consistency to confirm they're coming, then that's good. I'll tell you a quick anecdote of how I use this. So it's really annoying, but uh, where I am and sometimes when I need to get Ubers, it's just annoying for cars to come in and get me. And I understand that, which means sometimes I can have cancellation and it's really annoying. So what I do to avoid cancellations when an Uber accepts, but then, you know, maybe they cancel, which is annoying, as I've said 20 times now, I'll actually send them a message and say, hey, really excited to see you. Um, I'll be waiting out the front smiley face and then they reply and then they don't cancel. So that's how you can use commitment and consistency, uh, which is a persuasion technique in your own life as well. And then there's the law, the persuasion law of reciprocity. So what if between when they've booked in and before they see you, you give them something, right? Instead of it being take, 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 can you send them something tangible? If you get high ticket clients, this might be a thing. Can you send them a free gift or something exciting and valuable? Maybe you have a lead magnets or whatever it is to really get them excited to wanna to work with you. So let's recap the three hacks for higher quality leads. One is the form. Ask for good information and use it to personalize their experience with you. Number two is the thank you page. Congratulate and future pace them and get them to take another 
action. Number three is to nurture them pre-call. Emails, SMS, video, gifts, whatever it is that's going to remove that friction and further the relationship. Well, there you have it team. Those were the three simple hacks to get high quality leads. Let me know what you thought in the comments or if you have any tips of your own that you can add to the conversation.